Our topic here is late corn herbicide spraying. And right before the show, Darren and I were talking and he goes, well, what is late corn herbicide spraying? And I said, all depends. I consider V5 late. Other guys are going to consider V8 late. And then we're going to get a few guys that they're going to say, boy, my corn's tasseling and I see some weeds out there. So we're going to talk about all those things today. First of all, why, why V5, V6, right in that timing, we've got our growing point coming up out of the ground. So now our growing point is up and above the ground and we've got to be more cautious with our plant. Some will say, Brian, we've even got to be more cautious early because ear shoots are going to start to initiate and At all those things V3, are going to, yep. going to start happening inside the I plant. Agree. And there are farmers I know that won't spray after V3 because they just don't want to put stress on the crop. So I do want to think about it that way. I don't want to think about it. Well, what does the label allow? Just because a label may say V8, for example, doesn't mean that's the best time to get the most yield and most profit for you. We suggest spraying as early as you can. Do everything you can to get an early crop canopy so you don't have late season problems. But here we are. We're getting on in the season. Let's talk about our late options. All right, the first thing I don't want you to use is dicamba. Well, I'll throw out 2,4-D too, but I think most everybody quit using 2,4-D 20 years ago on corn because they realized that wasn't safe. Well, straight dicamba isn't very safe past V3 either. I realize the label says up to V5, but we really want that done by V3 because like Darren said, ear shoots are initiated there. So with dicamba, you may have Roundup resistant weeds, or maybe you're raising conventional corn again and you want to use some dicamba, just don't spray it after V3 and especially after V5. All right, Brian, I'll take an easy one. And one that you really want to watch out for in late applications is atrazine. There are a lot of premixes now that contain atrazine, but there are also some guys that are mixing atrazine in separate with a lot of different products out there. Atrazine's safe to your crop. It's not going to hurt your corn, but you are limited on the label to 12 inch tall corn. So if you're pushing that window, even if you're only at V5 or V6, so you say, well, it's not really very late. If you're at 12 inches of growth already, the atrazine use has to stop. Darren mentioned premixes. There are a lot of premixes now that contain one of the group 15s, whether it's Outlook, Harness, Surpass, Dual, Zidua. Those products need to be sprayed. Just look at the label, but in most cases, it's up to 11 inch tall corn. Speaking of chemical families, Brian, one that's become very popular has been the HPPD family because Callisto went off patents. So now you can buy Mesotrione for really a low price, maybe only a few bucks. And once you get something that's cheap, I get it. People just want to keep using it. And fortunately, most of the HPPDs are pretty safe to the crop. So they've got some pretty generous labels where you can use them a little bit later in the season. You're going to have to look at each product individually to see what the label restrictions are. Here's the point though. Just because you can spray something on taller corn, it doesn't again make, sure, make that the best agronomic recommendation. But if you get in that window where you say, hey, I'm past V5 and I really don't want to use dicamba anymore, the HPPDs are probably the most popular choice you're going to have. Now, when it comes to weed control with those HPPDs, they're not great on perennial weeds. They're not great on the viney type of weeds either. So if you've got a weed that tends to vine out, in general, the HPPDs are a little bit weaker on those. But when we look at cockover, sunflower, velvet leaf, even a lot of the Roundup resistant weeds like ragweed and pigweeds, if you get them small, in most cases, HPPDs are going to work just fine. Just be cautious. There are some weeds beginning to be resistant to this class of chemistry. If you've got that happening in your area or if you just want to make sure it doesn't happen to you, try and find another mode of action that you could mix into. All right, I've got three last things. First, buck troll is actually labeled up to 36 inch tall corn. The problem is there isn't even a name brand buck troll anymore. There's just generic bromoxanil out there. Brox is one of the products we talk about quite often. The challenge when corn gets really big though is you're probably gonna need drop nozzles to get down and get coverage. That brings me to point number two. If you wanna spray after tassel, you can do that. There are some products labeled like 2,4-D for example. I don't love that option. You're not gonna save yield at all. It's just the question of, did you stop the weed from going to seed at that point? On our farm, I'd probably just give up. But if you wanna do it, you can go out and spray drop nozzles after brown silk. The final thing that I wanted to mention is there are some safeners. So there are products like dicamba that we mentioned earlier, and you say, well, I can only spray dicamba safely, really safely, up to V2, maybe V3, at the most V5. You could buy Diflex, it's got a safener in there. I still don't recommend spraying late in part because of drift concerns. 
Same kind of thing with Status. Status has some dicamba in there and it's got a safener, but I don't trust that safener when the corn gets really big and I worry about drift as well. All right, we've talked about a lot of different corn herbicides here. We just encourage you get good weed control, especially early in the season on your farm. That's where you get the best yield. And speaking of getting the best yield, you'll definitely want to control our Weed of the Week. We'll talk about how to stop it on your farm coming up next.